Hail and well met, my warriors of light and darkness, my defenders of Eorzea, my adventurers after the Aether Currents. This is your pal Runeweird, back with what is going to be the final episode of the Shadowbringer uh, series of guides for Aether Currents, and today we are doing a twofer. Pull up the old Aether Currents uh, log, which I strongly suggest you put on uh, on one of your uh, easy, easy to click uh, hot buttons. Uh, and as you'll see, we've got the Ratika Greatwood, and we've got the Tempest. The exciting thing about the Ratika Greatwood, as you'll take a look at the two uh, the two designations. Uh, once again, the Yellow Diamonds indicate how many quests we'll have to do uh, to be granted uh, quest given Aether Currents which usually is four. Uh, you usually take care of one during the MSQ has been my uh, my finding thus far and the exciting thing about Rektika is there are three wild Aether Currents out there for us to find. Uh, and then we'll wrap up with the Tempest. So without further ado, we are starting off in the sleepy town of Slitherbow uh, and uh, picking up our first quest here. Great Deceiver. And just to let everyone know, I do put the coordinates in for the for all of the quests and all of the Wild Aether Currents. And I also put in the chapters. Uh, so you don't have to sit through... Uh, my my dramatic readings uh or or for those times where i am uh you know <laughs> wandering wandering around the map hell uh to hell's half acres trying to file find, find a wild er aether current you can just basically use the chapters to zip to where the resolution is uh or to the start of the quest and bob's your uncle uh so without further ado let's talk to uh uh, Valen. Say, Aunt Jerun, Master Matoya speaks quite highly of you. I'm sure you have more important things to concern yourself with, but I need help, and there's no one else I can return turn to. It's my friend, Quinfort. Let's uh, maybe do a little little side by side here, a little, little more directorial. Ever since we are young, he's always excelled in the arcane arts. In fact, even now he's training to become a priest of the Knight's Blast. Perhaps the greatest of his gifts is clairvoyance, but I fear it's taken a toll on his mind as of late. He's always been different, but not like this. He's changed, frighteningly so. The others think him no stranger than usual, but they're wrong, and I mean to prove it. You don't know him like we do, which is precisely why I'd like you to talk with him, to get an objective opinion on the matter. Ah, assuming we find out what ails him, I hope there's a way to cure it. Okie dokie. Not sure being someone who actually doesn't know him from, uh from Adam, I don't know if my wisdom's actually gonna be, uh, all that that well added but hey see what we shall see <laughs> as foretold by the will of the wood we meet at last I've been expecting you rune Shh, no one else must hear of this not yet my dreams are plagued with visions of the future. Calamity is upon us, and each night I witness our impending doom. But hope is not yet lost, for the dreams speak to me of a savior in the form of a great serpent. He was revered as a god in the days of the Ronkin Empire, and I believe it yet lives in the Greatwood, waiting to be roused from slumber. It has many names. Many would call it the protector, some the great destroyer. The will of the wood demands I find this great serpent. It is our only hope of salvation. I have been chosen, Rune. 
to be the savior of Slitherbow. So this is where you two have been hiding. Now that you've gotten to know one another, what do you think? There's minus beyond saving streams are no omen. You believe him? Oh dear. I fear I've made a terrible mistake. Please don't tell me you too have communed with the will of a star or some such nonsense. Well, uh... Balin, please. We are in the midst of a most important discussion. When you first began talks of these dreams and delusions, I held my peace, but I won't let you drag anyone else into this. Such narrow-minded thinking is the why only I have been chosen by the wood, by the great serpent. Yes, Quinfort, whatever you say. You've mocked me for the last time, Valen. I will summon the great serpent this very day and prove to you the truth of my vision. Quinfort, wait! Where are you going? To meet with misfortune would likely bring him to his senses. But he's my friend and I can't stand the thought of him getting hurt out there. Will you help me look for him? If anything should happen to him, I'll never forgive myself. Already Aphrodite. Now we're gonna, uh, we are only level 70 stage here. I mean, normally I've been doing this as my uh, fully leveled bard. We're, we'll, we'll see how this goes. I mean, if I get my butt summarily handed to me by, by whatever's out there, uh, and just a fair warning, folks, I haven't even done any of the uh, class quests yet for Sage. Uh, just the first couple. Uh, and I am, <laughs> I am about to start the quest that kind of teaches you actually how to Sage. Uh, so that being said, if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing on this character, it's because that's the truth. I think I see him. And in fact, you, you know what? Let's uh, 74. Uh, as much as I would like to be Mr. Risque. The only problem with being level 70 is I'm going to drag half the forest with me, so. Enough, Quinfort. Even you should recognize the danger of wandering off alone in these woods. <laughs> you really have gone mad, haven't you? Mock me all you like, Valen. But now you'll bear witness to the truth with your own eyes. Behold, the divine protector of Ronka, the great serpent of legend. Oh, it can't be. <laughs> oh goodness that's the great serpent I said nothing great about that that what it, is it exactly I refuse to believe that's the serpent that it's a serpent please tell me you're joking <laughs> do not be jealous Valen 
The will of the wood works in mysterious ways, and this serpent is the key to our deliverance. Oh my god. Awesome. Ah. All right, one one quest down. Okay, so yeah, we'll we'll continue that quest at a later date, folks. When I uh when I get around to doing the uh, if I do I, I've been kinda thinking about doing like a completionist video series where we'll do like all the side quests in a region and stuff like that. So we'll uh we'll continue that when we when we get to it. But let's see. If this is our other Aether current quest here. And lo and behold, it is. Arthon is in a hurry, but not in such a hurry that he would deny a helping hand. You, you're the guest Master Matoya was telling us about. Please, you have to help me. I've searched high and low, but I can't find my friend Khans anywhere. I fear he's gone. He's run off to Fort Gone again. It's where we grew up, but it was abandoned years ago after the Sin Eaters attacked. The place is teeming with all manners of beasts now, and Master Matoya has expressly forbidden anyone from setting foot there. I don't know what's gotten into him lately, but we have to find him before he gets hurt. If you should find him first, you'll want to tell him our password. Talk to. He's a skittish sort, so don't delay in telling him so he'll know you mean no harm. All right. Talk to you it is. All right, so we are... Mounting up. Heading out into the great, uh great wild here as it were and I think what we're gonna I, I haven't decided yet uh, when I'll do the wild aether currents I think I think we're best off doing all the quests first and then uh, and then uh, doing the wild aether currents I mean of course if we run into a wild aether current while we're uh, while we're doing the quest that's uh that's another thing in which I will gladly uh take the easy win as it were what a beautiful forest It's really an ingenious way to make sure you, you know, you explore all their hard work, right? Like. It's Blessed Missionary. No, I don't. I don't think that's who we're after. Ah, there we are. S -s -s Stay away, I beg you chat mode and say use your keyboard or the software keyboard to you enter tech do and the lake and spheres talk to you well i guess we better you are from slitherbow arthur must have sent you then I was fine until the damned beetle. It's only scratch, but I'm starting to feel numb, and my vision's grown clouded. Worst of all, I dropped my only vial of serum somewhere in these damned woods. Could you find it for me? Here. Why not? <laughs> A serum bottle finding, we shall go.
Oh, hey, hey, hey. Speaking of wild aether currents, guys. Looky here. that puppy up all right gotta love it gotta love it when you're doing a quest and you get the old two for there's a sparkly and now back to our good good old intrepid friend in the next tree in the middle of the roots. Ah, yeah, did you find it? Certainly did, my friend. You. I should be fine for now after a bit of rest. What were you thinking coming back here? You could have been killed. I had to, Vathana, for my father. All right, so I think that's all the Aether Current quests for uh, Slither Bow. Ooh, it looks like we've got a couple of blue quests over here in Fan now. Let's uh let's do the old proverbial hop, skip, and a jump and talk about side quest city. Holy jeez. Let's see what the good old helmet has to say. Perfect suit up. Helmet is elated to have someone who can aid her. As I live and breathe an ally Ronka. Just so happens I have a vital task I would entrust to none other. Our advice on patrol require new raiments. And I would have you deliver them to them at Borust. They should be expecting you. I pray there will not be a repeat of your incident with Chieftain S. Ha ha ha. Hey, don't you judge. That wasn't my fault. Okay. Now, I love... I love Fan now. Don't get me wrong, but the place is a bloody, is a bloody maze. Uh, but the, then again, as I've often told people, if I'm in your D&D &D group, do not get me to, uh, do not get me to, me to be the map maker. It will bode very ill for thee. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's pull out. There we go. Alright. Oh, what a sight. Not often we see so vaunted a hero as yourself in this remote area. What do you need from me? Oh, it's what I've got for you. A new attire. Wonderful indeed. The fabric and designs are everything Element made them out to be. This will aid us greatly. Leather is made from the skin and rails and is unsurpassed in quality. They are bestowed upon all who come of age and complete the rites. The particulars of said rites, well, 
Let's save that for another time, lest I give you nightmares. Yeah, okay. An outsider come from the village. How did you? Ah, Helmet spoke of you. An ally of Ronke, yes. Welcome to Borest. This out pursues, serves dual purposes. Here we keep watch for any who would interlude on our, uh, intrude on our home, and also for beasts that would feed it. We must stay ever alert so that our arrows strike true. Awesome. She did not expect the ally of Ronka to come to Borest. What brings you here? Sorry, I did not expect. Well, you are a sharp-eyed beauty indeed. Ah, of course. Emmet said something would be delivering uh would be delivering these to us. They are made specially for archers and will not impede our movement as different material does. Every so often, invaders will come clad in steel from head to toe. However, their overconfidence makes them blind. Every defense has an opening, and that is where we take aim. Amen, sister. All right. Raiment's delivered. Unless you've kept one for yourself, I see your deliveries are complete. Thank you. Although I told them that you were coming, I imagine it was an entirely different thing to actually speak with you. It'll not be long until you are accepted as one of our own. May we work together again, Ally Alaranka. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's see what we shall see. Like that's should be the other Aether current quest. Soon find out. Uh, stand on ceremony. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Vanille would bestow blessings upon you. Runeweird, the esteemed guest of whom I've heard so much. My name is Lanil, Master of Rites. It is an honor to meet you. As I understand it, you've partaken of the Kitana Ravel's knowledge. Is that right? Then the Emperor's wishes have at last been fulfilled. A comforting thought, for which each passing year more and more of our hunters are lost to the Eaters. We were never a particularly fucking people. Now it is nigh impossible to sustain our numbers. But we will not be driven from our homes, our way of living. So long as the trees of the great wood stand, so too shall the vise. And to renew our union with the forest, we will be holding a small ceremony wherein we offer prayer to the gods. Would you honor us by serving as witness to this petition to the gods? Very good. I should mention the ceremony is not a formal affair. In fact, it can be quite lively. But for a hardened warrior such as you, it should prove no trouble at all. When you are ready, travel north to the Morning Stars and speak with my student, Fina. She will explain the rites. Travel to the north, okay. Alrighty, Aphrodite. See what the best way out of here is. All right. Soon.
this way out will serve our purposes. And then, yes, well, just uh, believe we should be able to follow the blue, the blue path of pretty flowers right to. the site of the ceremony. There we are. Ooh, what do we got here? Got some num nums. Ha. What business brings you to the morning stars? And you accepted. This is such an honor. Thank you for coming. Goodness, where are my manners? My name is Fina, and a pleasure to meet you. And this is my sister. Kiuna, how do you do? Are you certain this is wise? I realize he is an ally of our people, but the ceremony is not meant for outsiders. You cannot go against Miss uh, Master Lanil's wishes. Besides, we may never again have such an opportunity. You insist. Now, let me tell you about the ceremony. Freaking twins, that's awesome. As a Master Lanil has likely already explained, we will renew our bond with the Great Wood through prayer. To ensure our prayers reach the gods, however, we must first beseech the spirits of the forest for aid. Once summoned, we must prove ourselves worthy through combat. Only then will our prayers be delivered unto the heavens. Of course. As witness to the rites, it is up to you to do battle with the spirits. If you are still willing, of course. Wonderful. This shall be a ceremony to be remembered. Shall we begin then? Close your eyes and we will attempt to draw forth the spirit with our prayers. O oh, gods of the great wood, bringers of bounty and wisdom, we call to you now to renew our vows. For the strength to protect these lands, to be the shield that guards against the accursed light. We seek combat with your children, the spirits of the wood, to prove to you our worth. By the gods! Uh-oh. Got one each, do we? Spirits are of opposing forces, fire and ice, a terrible omen. Our prayers are enough to suppress the strength, but we cannot cast them out alone. Please, you must strike them down before they wander off into the woods. Not a problem, ladies. We got this. Easy peasy. Thank you for your help. But in light of what we have witnessed, I think it best we call off the ceremony for now. Spirits of opposing elements is the most dire of omens. The discord between them would prevent our prayers from reaching to the gods. This would not have happened were he not here. We may try again on the morrow, but he cannot be allowed to attend. Sorry, ladies. Sister, please. He is our guest, handpicked by Master Lanio. My apologies. It seems your attendance was not meant to be. Would you go and inform Master Lanio of what happened? We must remain here and clear the altar. Yeah, sorry about that, ladies. I doth apologize. Hmm. 
back so soon. What a ceremony. Fire and ice. Thank goodness they were not hurt. It's never too late to begin the ceremony anew, but I fear the source of our troubles is not to do with the spirits. All right, there we go, folks. Just want to take a look here. No, we'll have to we'll have to continue that on some sort of completionist guide. With that being said, let's pull up the old trusty Aether Current guide. Yes, all quests are done, and now we just have two wild Aether Currents to find. And with our trusty compass, 464 yards to the south, you say. Okay. I don't think. Oh, yeah, we don't want to be jumping down there. south perfect and uh just in case i haven't mentioned it before folks the great thing about the compass you don't have to be standing still or anything like that you can you can click it as often as you want so we got southwest to the south Southwest again. The south. Oh boy. There we are. I can see it up there. Now we just have to figure out a way. <laughs> we have to figure out a way to get up there. Oh, there we are. There's the slope. Aether current, aether current number two. All right, let's grab that bad boy up. All right, let's refresh. So one, one aether current, uh, wild aether current left to go, folks. Five hundred and six to the west. Uh, I wonder if I was gambling, man. I think hop skipping and jumping over to Slither Bow might save us a bit of a bit of search. Okay, to the north. Well, So just kind of up, maybe up around here. So that's that's one thing to keep in mind, folks, is the Aether Current just gives you the... Uh, what's the word to say? Horizontal directions. Uh, it could be above or below. 209 to the northeast. Yeah, I think I think we're on I think we're on the right way here. Yeah, it would appear that we are 
Okay, now this is where I get concerned. Whenever I see a cliff. There we are. And there we have it, just like that, folks. Let's gobble that bad boy up. And there we are. The Raktika Great Wood has been completed. We'll take a nice little fly through of this area uh, in a future video, I'm sure. Maybe we'll do something like uh, uncovering uncovering map uh, <laughs> uh, video log. Uh, right, so now for part two, we're going to head on over to the Tempest. want to go to uh i guess let's uh the macarensis angle first we'll just see if there's any any aether current quests there no wild currents to uh find in this it's going to be all all quests There we go. So we've got a few blue markers. Oh, jeez. I, I forgot. Oh, my goodness. I forgot that this is uh, where it is. <laughs> that was very, very horrible English. <laughs> But I forgot that we were uh, we were going to the to the city. The ancient Asian city, as it were. Let's see what we got here the bureau attendant have for us all right perfect uh the bureau attendant seems to be regarding you like a lost young child okay Boy. greetings and welcome to the bureau of the architect are you in need of assistance it would be my pleasure to answer any questions you might have. To your left is the counter where you may submit registrations for new creations. To your right, you will find the counter where you may uh, requisition concepts on file. Hmm. Am I correct in assuming you are not familiar with the services we provide? I see. A more detailed explanation is in order, then. You understand, you understand that by harnessing the powers of creation, we can give physical form to all manner of concepts, yes? Picture a bouquet of fresh, fragrant flowers, all the colors of a rainbow. Now picture those self-seen flowers formed of delicate crystal, impossibly fragile and radiating hues beyond the visual spectrum. Every day our people push the boundaries of imagination to conceive new and striking designs like these. But there are limits to what a single individual can shape with their abilities alone. Those who harbor greater ambitions may offer their concepts to others here that they might, with the strength of many, accomplish what one cannot. Cool. Not all concepts are approved for wider distribution, of course. Dangerous, subversive creations pose a risk to everyone. And so it is only after a comprehensive evaluation after a concept is judged to further the greater good, 
that we permit it to be shared with the community. Do you understand, little one? Since you are here, I think you might benefit from conversing with some of the others currently awaiting themselves, uh, availing themselves of our services. Why don't you go and speak with some of the citizens waiting for their registrations to be processed? Much as I would like to believe my explanation was more than sufficient, I expect that you might gain greater insight in this way. All right, we can do that. Ha! Hello, hello, little one. So rare as it is to see one of your size roaming about here. Come to learn about the Bureau, are we? I'm here today to register a new creature. Boneless and with semi-translucent translucent skin, it drifts through the air. Like a dancer on a summer breeze, its tentacles trailing behind. It utilizes gas bladders to propel itself from place to place, you see. I'll admit it's not the most elegant of designs. I'd not shed a tear if it were rejected, quite frankly. But what can I say? I take pleasure in conceiving unorthodox designs. A beginner like you shouldn't take after me, though. If you're looking to pick up a few uh, tips, you should probably ask someone else. Ah, oh, is that my number they just called? If you'll excuse me. Awesome. Now that I've found my big boy words, uh, instead of the city, uh, Amrot is freaking awesome. Are you the child I saw speaking with the attendant earlier? I thought so. So young and already so eager to learn about concepts and creations. That curiosity will serve you well, little one. I've been credited with a few popular concepts, I'm proud to say. I'm hoping to, that my latest will be equally well received. Autonomous figures. I say my latest, but really it's a product of many others' efforts and individual insights. But such is the case for every masterwork, I reckon. Autonomy notwithstanding these creations, no, no fear. They are wholly devoid of emotion and will, without hesitation or resistance, engage in any dangerous activity even if death is assured. There's a beauty in that, I think, and I hope the officials do so as well. I tell you, there is nothing more nerve-wracking and thrilling than the waiting period before you receive the result. I love it and hate it in equal measure. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about it. If you're still keen to learn more, why not pester the worry board over yonder? Come to think of it, I think their particular creation was designed to appeal to children. Cool. Hey, Captain Worrywart. You there! An aspiring creator come to learn about the Bureau and its inner workings, I trust? That's all well and good, but since you're here, perhaps you can help me with a little something. I've been refining a concept of mine for some time now. Adorable little creatures designed to be perfect plaything for any young citizen. But I'm still terribly unsure if it's ready to be submitted for approval. Which is why I was hoping you might first put it through its paces and tell me what you think. Your honest opinion. I'll have no flattery from you, young man. This matrix will allow you to summon my creations, uh, but don't use it here. Take it outside first, and don't be afraid to play rough. It's all part of the fun. Oh god. Yeah, 
definitely mountain up. Amarat, Amarat was built by giants, so. See what the toy is all about. Whoa! If their if their children are are on par with a level ninety bard, <laughs> sure it's it's good to go. I mean the slime's kind of cute, right? But but once again, without having full knowledge of of what their children are up to on a on a regular basis. How did you find my lovelies? Were they as delightful and engaging as I hoped? Tell me everything. Spare no details. Well, dude, um... I say. They spouted nonsensical phrases and attacked you like mad beasts. How distressing and not at all what I intended. My sincerest apologies to you, little one, for the unpleasant experience. Still, from these experiences do we grow stronger and wiser. Yeah, experience points. I look forward to the day when you will try your hand at creation too. Excellent. Come on, Swift Wind. Off to the next Aether Current quest. Which hopefully is this. marker right here. We'll soon find out. Patronizing a Moratine. <laughs> Right, perfect. Love it when that happens. The patronizing Amortine is struggling to conceal their disapproval of your attire. Uh oh. I must say, little one, those garments you're wearing. They are your own original concepts, I take it? Clearly, they must be, given their rather singular flamboyance. I'd never dream of... Uh... St stifling a fledgling creator's creativity. But to parade about in your cultivated individuality is hardly praiseworthy. And a more time of character shares their creations with the community. They do not hoard them for their use alone. The delight and disparity is a mark of the morally deficient. Oh, shit. Disparity engenders feelings of want and resentment, which degrade the bonds of fellowship. Thus do we encourage creators to share and share alike, else we risk kindling the embers of covetousness and voidance, or violence that ever smolder in the hearts of all. Therefore, I must implore you, little one, to cast aside your original trappings and don't come out uh, and don the communal robes, that you might acquit yourself as an equal among many. So doing, you will be afforded greatest respect and autonomy. Worry not, this will be a simple affair. I recall seeing a gentle soul outside the hall of rhetoric carrying robes perfectly suited for one of your diminutive stature. I am sure they will be glad to share their wealth with you. 
But do hurry, little one. The eyes of the collective are ever watching and weighing your worth. Okie dokie. Heaven for Fend, we wouldn't want, uh, we wouldn't want to bend any noses at a joint. rather smart this day. What can I do for you, little one? Robe serve in lieu of your ensemble. Ah, uh, how prudent. Alas, I have nothing I can offer you at this present time. The ones your associate saw me carrying earlier were a failed experiment. I never intended to make them so small. I disposed of them shortly thereafter. No experiment. Oh. By your bemused expression, I gather you find it odd that your elders can fail in so simple an implication of creation magics. Oh, it's more common than you may realize, little one. In this instance, a gaggle of children was passing by as I held the image of the robes in my mind's eye. Simply by becoming aware of their presence was the form influenced and the final product changed. All things considered, it could have been worse. Just the other day, I was attempting to conceive a white-haired lion, when all of a sudden this exquisite eagle alighted on the nearby railing, giving me quite the shock and dramatically altering my initial concept. A griffin. Yes, indeed, it was a most unexpected development, but not an altogether unwelcome one. Great strides are often born from unexpected impetuses. But even inspiration has its limits. For all the wonders we have wrought, I do wonder if there will come a time when we have fully explored the potential of our powers when there's truly nothing left unmade, and only iteration and in imitation and stagnation remain. But such esoteric matters need not concern you, little one. For now, I would encourage you to embrace your creativity and work your magics without fear of failure. Nevertheless, it, still, it would still be in your interests to don the appropriate robes to avoid excess scrutiny. Why don't you go to the Bureau of the Architect and request the appropriate concept so you can fashion one yourself? Sounds like a good, good idea, sir. Just look how huge this place is. So much work put into this zone. All right, let's see what we can do. See if we can even see above the bloody ledge. Welcome to the Bureau of the Architect, little one. Are you here to request a concept for personal use? If so, what sort of concept did you have in mind? Ah, communal robes. I'll take but a moment to prepare, but before I fill out your fill your request, I should caution you. Pardon me for asking, but your creative potential is, um, relatively low, is it not? We are trained to assess these things, and I fear that you do not possess the ability to express this concept in physical form. 
It's almost as though you completely lack it, though that can't possibly be. But regardless of the reason, you needn't worry. We have special tools that may be used to address this very eventuality. I'll furnish you with an etheric robe you can use to restrain one of the misbegotten uh, cubbuses uh, that congregate in the plaza north of the Academia, Anida. You'll need to weaken your quarry before you can uh, reliably bind them. But once you have, you can repurpose their energies to create your own robes. Okay. Almost ran out of time on good old Swift Wind there. And once again, I, I do I do like this uh, system they have in place for for gaining light in in Final Fantasy fourteen for each zone. I like that the quests uh, and like a combination between the quests and the wild aether currents. Uh, I do appreciate that it takes you throughout most of the zone, not all of the zone, but most of the zone, you know, so that way you actually see the zone, right? You actually get to experience it. All right. <laughs> okay, we gotta go. We gotta go easy on these guys. I kills them too quick. Do do. Swifty. Let's go, my fair feathered friend. Yeah, so I'm thinking for Dawn Trail, what I might do. Uh, as I do, I will be uh, obviously streaming the MSQ for, for Dawn Trail. Uh, but what I'm going to do in Dawn Trail is that at, at the end of every chapter, that's usually when the Aether Current quests become available. I'm going to do them as I level up. That way, when I'm done the expansion, I've got, I'll have all the flight zones ready to go. Welcome back, little one. Did you succeed in binding a cubus? I did. You have done well, little one. Allow me to save its energies and prepare the matrix for you. It should only take a moment. Here you are creation matrix that you may use to generate your own robes. Concept is inscribed upon the crystal, which has been infused with the aether of the beast you brought me. What? Why are you looking at me as though you do not know how to channel the powers of creation? It is as natural as, is it as natural as breathing. Even a newborn babe has the instinct. Even if your potential is lacking as one of our people, you must surely know what to do. Whoopsies. Well. <laughs> there we go. 
Another Aether Current quest down. All right, so hopefully the debate and discourse will be another Aether Current quest. We'll soon find out. And just a reminder, folks, uh, as much as I hate to do the shilling and stuff, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button as it does help the algorithm of the channel grow. That's what we're trying to do here is grow a, a nice, big, happy, healthy community. Excellent. Loquacious Amrotine wishes to engage you in a battle of wits. Oh boy. Greetings, little one. Come to debate. At so young an age, how wonderful. Shall we retire to the benches and settle on a topic? Oh, my apologies for jumping to conclusions. My friends are not quite as fond of the Hall of Rhetoric as I am, so I have a habit of catching up any potential conversation partners. Adding up, sorry, not catching up. So if you are not here to debate, I presume you are here to learn about the mysterious and esoteric, esoteric goings on here. It would be my pleasure to act as your tutor in these matters, if you will indulge me. The Hall of Rhetoric, as its name indicates, a place where citizens may freely gather to discuss and debate all manner of topics. This central forum is ideal for open discourse, but smaller rooms are available for those uh, desiring more intimate conversation. Oh, and there's a wealth of reading material concerning rhetorical techniques and history penned by the greatest minds uh, and, uh, on offer as well, should you wish to refine your techniques through self-study. To my mind, however, rhetoric is a living, breathing thing that is best experienced in the moment of conception and execution. Perhaps a demonstration would best serve to further your education. I saw a contemporary of mine engaged in a lively debate earlier, just outside the hall. Go and see if they are still there, and issue to them my personal invitation to a friendly battle of wits. Alrighty, Aphrodite. Battle of Wits shall be had. That is precisely my point. That their obsession with this so-called mandate to approve only the most beneficial concepts for wider distribution never mind the ridiculous subjectivity of their criteria, has led the Bureau of Architect astray from its original purpose. Huh? Have you business with me, child? Regardless, I am in the middle of a heated discussion at month with my partner. Come back later. No, no, no. My position has nothing to do with the intrinsic value of unique identity and whether or not it is refined, retained. Rather, I posit that the reproduction of a given concept are, are inherently imperfect, and thus they are themselves unique, albeit in minor but, un but significant degrees. And, most importantly, this variance is not to be condemned but celebrated. Better to that, better that than strive in vain for an impossible standard that, even if met, could leave us lesser for lack of diversity. The armor titans appear, uh, titans appear to be engrossed in their debate, utterly deaf to you and your pleas for attention. Why, aren't you a stubborn little bugger? It's strangely endearing, I must admit. But we have all the time in the world. Why are you so insistent that I speak with you this very instant? I'm trying to learn here, boss. 
Ah, you are acquainted with that chatterbox. I, sorry, acquainted with that chatterbox. I suppose I do owe them a debate or two, and now is as good an occasion as any. So be it. Wowzas, okay. I see you found my friend. Thank you, little one. And without further ado, let us commence the promised debate. As to the matter of what subject we shall debate today, I propose the recent calamity which has befallen our friends across the pond. What say you? The singular point of contention is, of course, whether or not Amarat should intervene on their behalf. I believe we should. The scale of the disaster which threatens that distant metropolis is of a scale heretofore unseen, and so equally considerable resources must be committed to counteracting its effects. I disagree. The scale concerns me less than the nature of the proposition itself. Are we to un uh, unilaterally intervene in the affairs of those half a world away? Are we to be the saviors of one and all? Such arrogance may well lead to our own downfall. While I understand your concerns from a philosophical standpoint, I fear you are too quick to dismiss practical considerations out of a desire to maintain an unassailable moral authority. But let us, you and I, hold for the present and offer the floor to our young student. You have heard our opening salvos in this debate concerning the fate of our neighbors across the sea. What is your opinion on the matter? Ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolent. Not save everyone. Sometimes it is all we can do to save ourselves. No, uh, to ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. Oh. Indeed, indeed. The same can be said regardless of one's opinion on the morality of intervention. There is a clear and undeniable benefit to Amorot in using this situation as a test bed for our newest creations, that we might develop and refine our defenses against a potential threat to our own fair city. How oh, readily you see the moral high ground. Was not our young friend's point that we have ethical obligation to aid those in need? Yet not only do you, instead, you'd like to focus on the benefit to Amrod alone, but you also deprive our distant neighbors of the agency to determine their own fate. You misunderstand me. What benefits Amrod benefits all creation. I firmly believe, for the knowledge and wisdom we stand to gain from intervention can be can then be shared with others empowering everyone to more effectively surmount similar tasks in the future. Ha ha ha. Awesome. I must say, it has been far too long since I engaged in such a refreshing exchange of ideas. My colleague was equally delighted by the opportunity, you may be assured. Some decry it as little more than an academic exercise. After all, we failed to reach a meaningful consensus, but I dare say they uh, missed the forest for the trees. 
Are we not more enlightened by the experience? Have we not been exposed to a greater variety of viewpoints? Is there not value in this alone? I truly believe we are blessed to be part of a society that exalts the free exchange of ideas and that encourages active participation in the public discourse. This may have been uh, no more than your first for foray into the exciting world of rhetoric, but I sense you have the soul of a debater in you. You may well have the potential to change Amrat in ways no one ever thought possible. I shall be watching your trajectory and with great interest, my young friend. Yeah, that's freaking cool. I mean, a little sad at the same time, uh, considering we know he's a ghost or a memory. All right, so it looks like we've got to go to the Ondo Cups. See if Narosha School has our our last Ethernet quest. All right, perfect. Narosha School is eyeing you with naked interest. Hail, finless one, and welcome to the cups. Long have I wanted to converse with one of your kind. I am called Narosha School. How may I address you? Ah, Rune's fine. Rune, weird, curious. Before we speak at length, there is something I would show you. Let us leave behind the cups and head due west. Come. Okay. Fair enough. This is the route we go. Well, look at Omrot in the distance. It's just gorgeous. are relics of your kind, yes. The leavings of a ship that has sailed the seas above long, long ago. They lie as they fell untouched by any Anto, or most have little interest in the affairs of the Finless. I, however, do. I was saved by one of yours after being washed ashore weary and near death. Such kindness is a rare and wonderful thing. And I would know more of the people who showed it to me. And so I ask you, Runeweird, to teach me of your ways. These objects, for example, what purpose do they serve? How are they to be used? Narash's coal uh, gestures to nearby debris, treating you to inspect them uh, closely and offer up a detailed explanation. Okay, fair enough. the debris you spy what appears to be a rotting ship's wheel. That was carved from the wood from one of your many trees, yes? What purpose does this particular contraption serve? It's used to steer a ship at sea. Ah, the vessels your kind uses to traverse our waters. And without a wheel, it is at the mercy of the wind and the currents. I see. Among the debris, you spy what appear to be the remnants of several shattered bottles of wine. Such fragile containers they were. I suspect that they were con once contained something of great value. Look, 
Can you tell me of their purpose? Ah, they were used to store intoxicating spirits. Fragrant liquids which cloud the mind. I have heard of these before. Do finless ones so delight in dulling their wits? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Thank you, Rune. In our short time together, you have already taught me so much. I see that none of these pearls of wisdom will serve my needs. Narasus, what are you thinking wandering off on your own with this finless one? This is no time for you to fiddle with their leavings. The Clutch Mother is in terrible distress. No, you do not understand. I brought him here to... Pray forgive this child his impudence. I am sure Sasson. On behalf of the Clutch Mother, I come to entreat your assistance. It seems you do not realize that in diet, driving back the waters of the Tempest, you have placed our beloved Clutch Mother, leader of the Ondo, in mortal peril. She is pregnant. Here in the depths, she will give birth to many, many eggs. We male Ondo will then take them to, into our care and raise them as our own. But have sent the flowing waters, we know not if she will be able to deliver them safely. If not, the future of our people will be in jeopardy. A flood of light claimed many on their lives. Though we have rebuilt our numbers somewhat in the decades since, it would be devastating to lose an entire generation. Or worse, the Clutch Mother herself. She wishes to speak with you directly, that we might together find a solution to this dilemma. Will you return with me to the Caps? Of course. Narasus, come. I will not let you trouble our guest or the Clutch Mother further. Ah, poor Narasus. Everything I have done, I have done for her. It's all right, buddy. <laughs> wrong place, wrong time. gate resides the Clutch Mother. Approach and hearken to her words. Got it, boss. Honored guest, I, Clutch Mother of the Hondo, so bid you welcome to our realm. You will forgive me for receiving you in this fashion. For the safety and well-being of my children unborn, I must remain within, away from the dangers without. As you know, under normal circumstances, this place would be filled with blessed water from which I would draw strength and support to bring these eggs into this world. Alas, I am but half submerged now, and I fear for my ability to fill my sacred duty. 
I am given to understand you and yours are the ones responsible for drawing back the waters of our realm. With good reason, I am sure. However, it is my sincere hope that you will agree to aid us, given that you are responsible for this state of affairs. Fear not, I desire no direct assistance. Rather, I would beg a boon of your people's knowledge of childbirth and how the Finland swans ease the burdens of their struggling mothers. I think it's a little different. Uh, the Rosh's own will be my agent in this matter. Heed his words and answer his questions. This is all that I ask. Do you consent? Yeah, sure. Call me Dr. Rune. I thank you, honored guest. Go well. Then it is agreed. However, I must consult with her attendants before we speak further. But now, I bid you and the Rosh's Cole go, go, go about your business. But be ready if called upon. Got it, boss. Wait, rune weird. Have you a moment to converse in private outside the cups, please? In the cups, out the cups. All to I tells ya. It's a rare thing indeed to be granted an audience with the Clutch Mother. I hope this serves to help you understand how important these eggs are to us. Before you came to the cups, I had been searching for a means to assist her in giving birth. That is why I have been studying the relics of your people. Fortunately, I found nothing that seemed suitable for this purpose. I cannot stress to you enough how important she is to us. She is mother to all on door. Her every egg, brother and sister. She would do anything and everything to welcome them into this world and see them grow into healthy, happy on door. There must be some way in which you can help us to achieve this end. Well... There will be maybe some sometime down the road, my friend. Well, my friends. We now have unlocked flight in the Tempest and ergo we have unlocked all the Aether Currents for the Shadowbringers expansion pack. Which means the next guide series is going to be all about the Endwalker series. This has been so much fun, guys. Uh, and like I've uh, like I've said before, don't forget if you got a if you've got a class to level, uh, now's the time to switch over to it and fly through the territory as there are tons of free experience every time you uncover like all this un you know unknown land is free xp guys uh but that being said uh we will uh call this video to an end my uh good warriors of light and darkness uh and i will begin work on the uh the n walker aether current guide uh which i hope to get out very shortly until then be good to yourselves be good to each other 
This is your pal Rune Weird signing out. Take care, folks. <laughs>